for what are debunked, frivolous, sovereign arguments. And they want to say that they're not happy about it. What is the problem? And the stranger was the one that actually shot you, not Mr. Barrison. That's the same situation. And that you had contact with her on the 20th. There was some physical. Mr. Brooks, this is my time. You need to not interrupt. That's the reason why the, uh, the charge was dropped. Mr. Brooks, the state you need to said stop. specifically, wrote you, Your Honor, and said that they know it was no incident that day. Mr. And Brooks, now you want to sit up here. Do not interrupt me you, or you will be removed to and, the other and courtroom. And now you want to sit up here. Stop. And try to now. And try to add something in that you know for a fact never even happened. You want to sit up Mr. here and Brooks, talk about every who time has grace and all this. You're talking about someone with five kids that don't have custody. You need to stop None right now or you will be removed. Remove me then. All right. He will be removed. He cannot simply stay quiet I don't consent when this to being court talks. Sentenced anyway, I don't consent to this just like I told you. I don't know the. He'll uh, be in recess until I don't, he's I don't even to the understand the, the true nature and cause. Okay, but what you are doing right now no, is highlighting something and making more of a spectacle. So if your office in general does not want to facilitate and or incite violence, then we need to just sit down and move on. That's it. There were 18 witnesses, 16 or 18 witnesses that testified today. There was nothing that was said until Ms. McNeil made her point made and, you know, we're moving on. But is the court going to do anything about maybe stopping it from happening again? When these people are upset about specific things that have gone on from that table, like shooting the middle finger up at this court and laughing and joking, Ms. McNeil, be quiet. When these people have sat in this courtroom and watch this behavior from that table, and they want to say that they're not happy about it, what is the problem? Judge, I have no problem because I have thick skin. But once you bring in my children, I think that's highly improper. And it's I didn't even sport. know you have children. I don't know what you're talking about. Your children? What about your children? First of all, Your Honor, this was the subject of a motion. I'm well aware of that. And the court left the door open. This for me, not for you. My understanding of you your... should have come and asked for uh, for reconsideration. You did on the one motion, and in fact, I granted your motion for reconsideration. That was excuse not our me, motion. I, I, I uh, not uh, excuse me. I, I I did. I granted. We did not move that to reconsider. That was their motion. I, I, we have I, not filed any me, motions to reconsider in this case. That was their motion for reconsideration, which I denied. But uh, I said I denied it or I indicated a bias towards denial is what I did. Held it open with a bias towards denial. Why would you think that that made it okay for you without any advance notice to bring this matter before the jury? You are already, you were, I, I was a, astonished when you began your examination by commenting on the defendant's post-arrest silence. That's basic law, it's been basic law in this country for 40 years, 50 years. I have no idea why you would do something like that, and it gives, um, uh, well, I'll, I'll leave it at that. So I don't know what you're up to. May I respond? Yes. We filed another acts motion on this exact issue because, in my mind, and I argued this, it is identical to what was going on on the night of August 25th in the sense that the defendant was using this exact same weapon. He was using it in a manner to try and protect property. No, he wasn't. There's, Your Honor, I, with all due respect. I'm not going to rehash the motion. That's absolutely untrue. It and is there's, no, no, no. Your arguments of record, my comments are of record, and why I ruled as I did is of record. There's nothing that I heard in this trial to suggest that anything's changed. Even if you're correct in your assumption that you know more than uh, I did at the time, uh, you should have come to the court and say, I want to go into this. Uh, why you would think that you could go into it without any advance notice to the court, I don't understand that. And as the uh, defense is pointing out, you're an experienced trial lawyer, and this should not have been gone into. Your Honor, there have been things in this case, testimony in this case, that I believe opens the door to this. For example, 
the defense has introduced evidence that the defendant pointed a gun at a man wearing yellow pants because that person was on a car on the car source lot. Now, there's no justification that I can think of why the defendant would point that gun at someone. The defendant has just testified this morning that he agreed with that person in the yellow pants that he pointed the gun at him. He said, I was joking when I said that to the guy in the yellow pants, but he said, he's acknowledged that he told the person in the yellow pants, yeah, you're right, I did point a gun at you when you were sitting on a car. He said, I did. That's what he said. Exactly. Testified. So he's agreeing. May I finish, please? I'd like to have a chance to make a record, if I could, without being interrupted, if that's okay. It, was, know, it wasn't excluded, Your Honor. You know why it was excluded in the first place? Because it's, it was propensity evidence. That is exactly what 90404 is designed to prevent. You're talking about his attitudes. His attitude is he wants to shoot people. Now, I've admitted that kind of evidence in other trials when it's been appropriate. I didn't admit it in this case because, to me, what I've heard in this trial, and by the way, Mr. Richards absolutely correctly points out that just hours ago, I said I had heard nothing in this trial to change any of my rulings. That was before so the why? Testimony, Your Honor. Pardon me. That was before the Don't defense testimony. Don't get brazen with me. Uh, uh, you knew very well. You know very well that an attorney can't go into these types of areas when the judge has already ruled without asking outside the presence of the jury to do so. So don't give me that. That's number one. Number two, this is propensity evidence. I said at the time that I made my ruling, and I'll repeat again now for you, I see no similarity between talking about wishing you had your AR gun, which you don't have, <laughs> so that you could take fire rounds at these uh, thought to be shoplifters, and the incidents in these cases which are not, there's nothing in your case that suggests the defendant was lying in wait to shoot at somebody or reflecting upon the shooting for a vast amount of time. Every one of the incidents involves a, a matters that involve seconds in time. So I don't, I commented at the time, I don't see the similarity and I don't see the similarity now. If it's not similar, that's, that's the whole rule. Those are all the exceptions to 90404. Check the authorities. Wigmore and Evidence. Judge Weinstein. Colonel McCormick. It's the, the prior act has to bear the signature of the accused, or it has to be so similar as to suggest it's a common plan or something like that. You have an incident where he's making comments about some alleged shoplifters versus crimes that involve instantaneous actions, whether premeditated murder or whether self-defense, that's for the jury to decide. But I don't see the similarity. I said it couldn't come in, and it isn't coming in, no matter what you think. Number two, I, I have to be concerned that with what Mr. Richards has said about the, the, the progress of the trial and, and um, when, when you were way, well, I said you were over the line, in, uh, close to or over the line on commenting on the defendant's pretrial silence, which is a well-known rule. I, 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 I'm astonished that that would have been an issue. So I don't want to have another issue as long as this case continues. Is that clear? It is. Thank you. May I ask the jury to come back in, please? That's, that's not a subpoena. The subpoena is when you actually get the subpoena paperwork by mail or I, I don't. Mr. Brooks, you need to ask a question. Uh, can I get to it, Your Honor? No, because you're trying to define something which would be testifying, which you cannot do at this time. So just, the jury will disregard his last comment. But go ahead and ask a question of this witness. something else. Wow. Mr. Brooks, that was inappropriate. Do you have any other questions yes, for this I witness? Yes, Please I ask do. them. I would like to get through one more witness, but I want to take a short comfort break. Uh, for everyone, so I'll rise for the jury. Thank you.
Mr. Brooks, not now. Not allowed to. Not you. now. The jury is in this courtroom, and you will show respect for them and for this court. Respect for them will Mr. be Brooks, telling them the truth. Stop. I'm putting you on notice that you are on the verge of this court creating a curative instruction about your frivolous arguments. I will not have you claim legitimacy for what are debunked, frivolous, sovereign arguments. Then that prove, is why prove your questions prove are being Prove that it's frivolous. Prove that it's frivolous. Prove it. All the cases that we've already referenced, sir, we are in recess. We'll be back and in prove five it. minutes. Thank you, everyone. I don't agree to a stop. Can you prove it? I'm away from the jury. Any, how anybody in their right mind could listen to these proceedings this morning and report that, much less Elizabeth Williams in the New York Times, why they have her covering this case when oh, she I wrote don't it. want to no, go no, down. No, I, no I'm Attorney Pattis, I may, don't. May I I no, no, no. No, may I be heard? No, Because I'll do it on no. the courthouse steps under 3.6B if I, I, I have to. Attorney Pattis, I have made it so clear that when I'm speaking, you have to stop speaking. You, you, you've got to just, you just can't push it like that. You are welcome to leave this courthouse. In fact, you're welcome. I suppose you could stay in the courtroom and say whatever you want. But when I'm on the bench and I tell you to stop speaking, you need to stop. I'm going to say this again. I, I, I don't know how well, I don't know if I'm not making myself clear and maybe it's my fault. I do not want to sanction an attorney. I do not want to find an attorney. I have gone almost two decades as a judge and never had to do that. And I don't want to do it now. But if we have a continued problem where you're talking over me, I, I don't know what else to do. I've asked you nicely. I'm literally almost begging you. I have no recourse but to do that. So I don't, I'm not asking for your response, but you are certainly welcome to say whatever you would like to say when we're not on the record in the courtroom. That's your right to do so. And I know that you will um, abide the rules of professional conduct along those lines. I want to just get back and say this. I am responsible for what happens on the record in this courthouse um, in this courtroom, and I am not responsible for any uh, other issues. So I don't want to respond to that or go down uh, and address any such statements. My concern, my concern was that there were safety issues or that, the, that there were statements made to the families, the plaintiffs, um, or to Attorney Maddie given that we had the issue earlier. But I am so happy that that is not the case. So I think we can move on from this issue. Um, and I think uh, hopefully you will use your powers of persuasion and we won't have um, any further issues uh, where uh, Mr. Jones is suggesting that the jury not um, follow their, their oath, frankly. So can we please move to the um, earlier filing about the curative clarifying charge? May, may, I, may I be heard just because I, I, under Phillips v. Ward? I, I, I don't think so, Attorney concern. Pattis. I'm not, I'm not giving you the opportunity. It's not a give and take here. I've said what I've said, and I think that is all I'm going to do on the topic. So I'm are you prepared? You. I'm are, begging you for an opportunity. Uh, no, not at this, uh, Attorney Pattis, no, I'm, I'm sorry. Do you want to be heard on your, um, the curative charge now? I have, I have one more issue to raise with regard to the press conference, Your Honor. Your Honor. Well, I'm not giving Attorney Pattis any further opportunity to address it. I, I think there's nothing at this point that I need to do. If, there is, if, you, if you disagree, I encourage either or both of you to file something in the file. No one was jumping up when they were referring to the defense children. No one jumped up to try to tap down that rhetoric. That is the rhetoric that I am talking about. That is what I'm trying to be very clear on. Jeff, Marcus, the state, they can hide behind their arguments. But we all are witnessing what is occurring in this courtroom. Which is myself. I'm a judge. And, and I, I understand that I'm in charge you, of the decorum. And I feel 
that 99% or a great percentage of what has been said has been appropriate. Everybody has maintained decorum, but for a few comments, it's best to just move on as opposed to highlight them. This is true, Judge. But I am witnessing a building of momentum, and I'm encouraging the court to direct the state to tap down on that momentum so it does not reoccur and it does not become a theme. Thank you, Judge. Your Honor, for the record, yes. the only thing the state has said to any of these witnesses when they get up is would they like to say something on behalf of the victim they're representing? There's been no encouraging or inciting as Mr. Weeks has put on this record. That is a blatant falsehood and a recreation of the record. As far as no objections being made, it's the defense that could have objected. It's not the state's duty to object to their own witnesses when they're testifying. Okay. I, I, listen, I've already heard. If you have anything else to say, you can put it in writing at a later time. I've heard from both sides more than once. That's going to be it. I've made my decision. Like I said, 99% of what's been testified to has been appropriate. I do not want to highlight uh, the few things that were said that were perhaps not appropriate, and let's move on. You can have as many seconds as you want in writing, and you can put all of your objections in writing. They've been made multiple times from your chief assistant, from Ms. McNeil, and I don't want to hear anything else. I've already heard it. Is there something that has not already been argued? Yes, ma'am. Okay, exactly what is it? Judge, before Mr. Schachter took the podium and testified before this court, um, I, sh I wanted to, the record should reflect that both Mr. Marcus and Mr. Sass looked at the statement prior, prior to the reading. And so their implicit adoption of what he was saying of this improper argument is improper this court. And the court should have Okay, but what board. you are doing right now <laughs> is highlighting something and making more of a spectacle. So if your office in general does not want to facilitate and or incite violence, then we need to just sit down and move on. That's it. There were 18 witnesses, 16 or 18 witnesses that testified today. There was nothing that was said until Ms. McNeil made her point made, and, you know, we're moving on. But is the court going to do anything about maybe stopping it from happening again? When these people are upset about specific things that have gone on from that table, like shooting the middle finger up at this court and laughing and joking, Ms. McNeil, be quiet. When these people have sat in this courtroom and watched this behavior from that table and they want to say that they're not happy about it, what is the problem? Judge, I have no problem because I have thick skin. But once you bring in my children, I think that's highly improper. It's being I didn't even sport. know you have children. I don't know what you're talking about. Your children? What about your children? For them to comment on my children is highly improper. And for this court to allow that kind of testimony okay. is also improper. There was, I don't remember any comments about any children. And if there was, it, it, it obviously didn't, it, it, it came and went without me noticing it. Judge, I can assure you that if, if they were talking about your children, you would definitely notice. You need to sit down right now. You're out of line. In fact, you're excused. You need to go sit in the back with your with your uh, chief public defender. He's the public defender. Mr. Weeks, please ask the lawyer from your office to go sit down and not say anything else. To try to threaten my children and bring up my children is inappropriate. Go to the back of the room now. That just violated about every rule of professional responsibility that I have ever, I have never. If you're gonna get up here and you're going to- Judge, I asked you to go sidebar on this matter. You, sidebar or not, you don't have one of your assistant public defenders say something about my children? Judge, that same venom that the court is expressing is the same venom that defense counsel had to sit through this entire morning she when their children She brought up her children multiple referenced. times during the trial. Nobody knows if I'm barren or not. They don't judge, know about my children. Judge, sit down. Sit down. Judge. Sit down, Mr. Weeks. Please do not summarily dismiss I'm me. I'm summarily dismissing I'm asking you. Go the court. sit down. I'm asking the court. I asked the court to go sidebar. Go sit down. You don't threaten. 
The Judge, court's children. Every one of this courtroom. Just did that. Go sit down. No, no one in this courtroom had to endure what we Go had to endure. Go sit down. Miss, Miss McNeil has made her children a spectacle more than once during this trial. That was her choice. You have absolutely no right to have one of your assistants come up here and suggest something about my children. Now, please go sit down. Judge. You're judge. inappropriate and out of line. Go sit down. Judge, may you have a brief recess? No. Go sit down. May I have a brief recess so I can speak to my attorneys? We're moving on with the sentencing, Mr. Weeks. So I can I have a brief recess? No. Thank you. It's 136. Thank you. What's the nature of your objection, Mr. Shellhorn? Judge, I think there was a question there suggesting that the attack, the dog bite, and I think there was something else was going on before any shots were fired. I'm yeah, not I, sure I don't even know exactly. what the I, I don't even know what the factual basis is for that. Judge, I can ask a witness. No, you whether... can't. No, you can't. Not without a factual basis. You just can't ask for speculation. That's what you're asking for. I'm asking you a question whether or not... There's no evidence that it happened before. None. Judge, not, I, not a scintilla I believe of I, evidence on the record so far so that, that witness, supports that question. If a witness says that something happened, I can't ask them if... You've, you've if asked them happened. 500 questions about what happened, about her recollection of it. Which is fine. Now you're asking, well, are you sure it didn't happen before? You have no basis to ask that. Her recollection is horrible. No, it's she's not. Changed, she's changed her story over it, and It doesn't over matter. Again. It doesn't, it's Mr. Belinkus, it does not allow you to suggest to this jury to engage in speculation, which is what you're doing. Your client doesn't remember the incident, according to the expert reports. So that's not a factual basis for you. And there's nothing in this record to suggest that any of this happened, the beating, the phone, the dog bite before. In fact, we have a 911 call where it's patently obvious that the dog is in the area because it is incessantly barking and heard over the 911 call, which is after the shooting. So I, I, you need a factual basis. That is black letter law 101. My factual basis, Judge, is that these people, both Cataract and Goodwin, you know, have, have a motive to lie with regards to what happened. They, they filed a lawsuit. There's hostility. And, and again, but again, even assuming all that's true, so why there's, no evi no, but there's no evidence in the record. That's like saying, well, isn't it true that a stranger drove down the road when Michael Barrison was there and got out of his car and the stranger was the one that actually shot you, not Mr. Barrison? That's the same situation. There's no evidence in the record that that happened. You're just trying, you, you, you're trying to create in the jury's mind some alternate issue without any facts in the record to support it. Now, if Mr. Barrison were going to testify about something, that's different. Judge. But the experts have said he doesn't remember anything about the incident. Understood, Judge, but again, whatever ruling you, you make, obviously, I, I abide by it. But in this particular case, this witness's testimony, as well as her boyfriend, which are basically the only two pieces of evidence. No, and the 911 call, okay. which lays out exactly what happened immediately after the shooting. Immediately after the shooting, and I believe I can question the timing of the shooting based on their inconsistent statement, their motivation to lie. And, and no, you're not going not, to, not to create some alternate universe scenario without something in the record. I can't get anything in the record, Judge, unless I could ask these questions. No, uh, there's plenty in the record so far. There's plenty in the record so far, but nothing in the record to show that the beating, the dog bite, and everything happened before the shooting. Well, Mr. Goodwin is going to testify, Judge, that Mr. Well, Cataract disappeared for a significant period of time. All right, well, then ask him that. It's ask him that question. It's implausible for someone to it be shot... Mr. Belinkus, I can't predict what's going to go on on the record in the future when other witnesses testify. 
If the scenario changes, then you can ask it then. At this point in time, there's nothing in the record to suggest the scenario that you want to ask in a question for the jurors. There's not. Judge, okay. That's my ruling. End of it. All right. I'll go off the record now because you have to. Uh, Speculative. Overruled as to both. The it's witness may answer. T. Yes. And you had torn ligaments? Objection leading. Overruled. Did you say that in the question before? T. Yes. And were those both in the same leg? Objection leading. T. Sorry. Yes. Over, overruled. If we yeah, of course. just wait when there's an objection. Um, I'm overruling it. It's relevant. It's not leading. The witnesses' answers may stand. I mean, yeah, you overrule every objection. And the jury will disregard the additional commentary made by Mr. Brooks at this time. It's additional misconduct at his findings. And which leg was that, sir? Objection, accent, answer. Overruled. You may answer. And be scared of my left leg. Did you have to have surgery on that leg? No objection. Leading. Overruled. T. Yes. Just one? Dos. Two. That's not going to work either. Mr. Brooks, you are advised to stop with the commentary. No, I'm going to say what I want. You called this witness. I'm going to take a break right now and excuse the jury and this witness. All right. What, you, what you're doing is judicial misconduct. It's judicial misconduct. But you don't want the jury to hear the truth. That's not fair to the jury. They have a right to hear everything. I'm not going to sit here and let you fix, fix the trial because you don't want to tell the truth to the jury. Mr. Brooks, please stop. No, they ain't no please. You are nothing. being disruptive. Ain't you no are please. being disrespectful. Yeah, you always going to find some reason down. to say somebody's being disruptive because they want the truth to be out there. Man, quit it. You're supposed to be Mr. the judge. Mr. Brooks, I'm advising you that continued interruptions will result in you forfeiting your right to be okay, present in this court. Under what, under what law in fact can you do that? Illinois versus Allen, Okay, sir. but the fourth, the fourth uh, option that you made up that's not even in the uh, law? Mr. Because Brooks, you can't do that. I need to make a By ruling. law, you can't do that. I need to make and you a know finding. you can't. All right, I'm going to um, excuse everyone. Mr. Brooks is being removed from the courtroom. He will continue in the neighboring courtroom. Uh, please make sure he has his objection signed and a pad of paper. So is that so that he can so is that holding me in contempt? And I will make a ruling when I. And, uh, so are you holding me in contempt? Up. Is that civil or criminal? now have a chance and a right to come in here and say what they're allowed to say and what they're legally allowed to say. What the defense is doing is illegal to try and curtail these victims' rights under the law, and it's unconscionable. These victims have a right to express themselves. I have not gone over what their statements are because under the law, under Chapter 960, they don't have to tell me what they're going to say. They can ask me if they need guidance, and I will provide it to them. But they have a right to address this court. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, State, you can go ahead and call your next witness. I just need to say that the defense is not attempting to curtail the limits of the, uh, the sentencing proceeding or the, or the rights that the victim's families have. We are not trying to do that. But the state attorney's office knows that what is happening here is beyond what the victim's families are constitutionally protected to do. You can say whatever you want to Mr. Cruz. You can attack him and say whatever you want. But you, your honor knows that what is happening here is not permissible. Ms. McNeil, stop suggesting that I know that something is impermissible and that I am allowing it to happen. You're finished. I've heard your objection. It's noted. State, go ahead and call Ms. Ramsey. Okay, who's questioning this witness? 
Hello, which witness? Which Your witness? next witness. <coughs> this, these don't have anything to do with the map. Yeah, we're just entering them. These are just no, records. We're just doing it now. So is it a secret who's going to be questioning your next witness? Because I'm going to find out in like three minutes. <coughs> no. Who was doing it? Um, if the records don't relate, but if, if we call the witness, it will be me. I'm assuming you're talking about that. Who is your next witness, and when are they being called, and which attorney is going to question them? Let me be clear, if I wasn't before. Because if these don't have anything to do with your next witness, then why are we having a jury wait outside right now? Just because we were trying to move everything in because it, in terms of timing, we do it now. In terms we, of timing, it would be much better to do it during the lunch break when the jury needs longer than you all. So we'll go ahead and pass on this. Let's bring the jury in, please. Um, Your Honor? Yes? Um, at this time, the defense rests. Other than putting in our records. We're not playing chess. I mean, will you please take the jury back in? Thank you. All right, go ahead and bring your records. To B. Nicholas Cruz Henderson, episode one record. Let me just stop. State, are you going to have anything ready for today? No. <laughs> We're, 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 us there was 80 witnesses. we're waiting for 40 more witnesses. I just want to say, this is the most uncalled for, unprofessional way to try a case. You, you all knew about this, and even if you didn't make your decision until this morning, to have 22 people plus all of this staff and every attorney march into court, be waiting as if it's some kind of game now I have to send them home. The state's not ready. They're not going to have a witness ready. We have another day wasted. I, I just, I honestly, I have never experienced a level of unprofessionalism in my career. It, it's unbelievable. So, Judge, you at, if we had any pretrial matters, you asked us to be here at 9.15. We were here at 9.15 to discuss pretrial matters. I have been practicing in this county for 20 years. You know what, years. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear well, it. Judge, you're insulting me on the record in front of my client, and I believe that I should be able to Okay, you myself. can do that later. You can put, make your record later. But you've been insulting me the entire trial. So blatantly taking your headphones off, arguing with me, um, storming out, coming late intentionally if you don't like my rulings. So quite frankly, this has been long overdue. So please be seated. You can receive the evidence. I will receive the evidence. And then you can um, put whatever you want on the record at the end. Go ahead. 2B, which is Nicholas Cruz Henderson Records, Episode 1. I'm sorry? Episode 1, Henderson Records for Nicholas Cruz. 2B. 2B? I'm sorry, 2B is in Victor. Is there any objection to 2B as in Victor? I'm sorry, what was that again, please? I can't read. Oh, Henderson Behavioral Health Episode 1. That's fine. Without objection, 2V will be received as 93. 2W, Henderson. Referencing States Exhibit 190. Captain Chapman, do you notice? Blood marks here in the water. Objection, Your Honor. The objection is sustained. Thank you. Did you observe blood marks in the water when objection, you were there that Your evening? Honor. Calling for speculation. Pardon? He is calling for speculation as to what discoloration uh, in in the water, if there is any, is That's caused by. I'll I'll lay a, more of a foundation, Your Honor. Captain Chapman, <clears throat> were you familiar with the scene as this picture depicts? Yes, sir. Did you personally view what this picture depicts? I did. Are you familiar with the discoloration, and did you observe the discoloration in this photograph on two different areas? I did see that. Were the, was that discoloration, in your opinion, consistent? Objection. He's not been qualified to give an opinion about this matter. I didn't hear the complete question. In your in your estimation, in your in your, your honor, objection. And if he's going to pursue this frivolous line of questioning, I'd ask the jury be excused. No evidence whatsoever. Objection is overruled. Let's pause the question. 
in your experience and observation, having observed the scene and all the matter that was there, were those lines in the in the water consistent with blood? Objection. Objection sustained. Thank you. I don't need to be thanked for any ruling. No. I'm sorry, Your Honor. <laughs> I, expressing my gratitude is improper. I appreciate that. Thank all you, Your right. Honor. And I'll ask one, just one last question, on the, on, and I, th I understand the court's ruling. Captain Chapman, are the, are the substance there that you identified as having observed, are they in a straight line? Are they in straight lines? Yes. Thank you, the court's indulgence. I would make a motion to strike his questions about blood from the record and the jury be instructed to disregard those questions. I've informed the jury that they are to disregard any question when I sustain the objection. They were previously instructed on that. Yes, sir. Thanks. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No further questions, Your Honor. Any further no, Your Honor. cross examination? Thank you, sir. You may step down. If you would turn the lights up, please. Jerry can come on out. So we're not going to address this civil matter? No. I was told to pay for something under a civil statute. Mr. Statute. Brooks, I am not the custodian. Bring it up with the clerk of court. How I'm not can I addressing bring it up it. with the clerk of court? She, how, how am I supposed to do that? So that makes me wonder is what's being, if it's a Mr. Civil Brooks, case, the jury's coming out. I'm not going to address your request for open civil, records. That's, civil, I'm not the custodian of the records, sir. Being sued? My sissy trust is being sued? <sighs> Civil Mr. Brooks, this is an irrelevant matter that you're attempting Look, to bring up in the presence of the was, jury. The record should not, reflect I was these to bring interruptions. It up the jury came out, Your Honor. You and I told that. you I wasn't going to address it. Please. Okay, so it's a civil matter. How, who's being sued? My sister trust? Because I, how can I be Mr. Sued? Brooks, it, you're talking about an irrelevant matter between you and the it clerk of court. It wasn't irrelevant so, when I got the paperwork from the clerk of court. So I was simply Mr. Brooks, trying to address it. I'm not going to address it. The jury will so disregard I'm, I'm these irrelevant this is a civil comments. Matter? We have an address subject. All right. Thank you, all everyone. Please be seated. The jury so will disregard the statements matter. Mr. Brooks is making about subject matter jurisdiction. They are a misstatement of the law. Yes. No, all right. And just like this is a civil case. Mr. Brooks, the jury's here. Please like show respect and decorum. According to this um, document, this is a Mr. civil Brooks, case. Mr. Brooks, please stop. Which means someone is being sued. Civil is a suit. Mr. Brooks, you're talking about an irrelevant matter. I'm starting the trial. The course right here that says it's a civil matter. Mr. Brooks so has nothing to do with My this case. trust is being sued. I have no idea what you're talking about. So I, I got the paperwork right here. All right, I'm going to excuse the jury right about. now, given this disruption. I'll rise for the jury. This should be properly addressed before the jury even comes out. That's why I tried to properly address it before we even went on the record. Mr. Brooks, stop. I'm not going to. This is. You are. Not I being respectful to this proceeding you, or to with this jury. Respect, no, it's not with all due respect, respect all stating due respect, that doesn't make it respectful. I was this paperwork by you, Mr. Brooks. Monica Pass. Stop talking till the jury court. is out. Okay, Thank you. So why can we address this before they came out? I'm that not going time, to address it. That bottom was the line. Time to address it though. We're supposed to do all the all the addressings before the jury comes out, before we start the matter. Please I was be seated. To simply address paperwork that was given to me. By you, Your Honor. That states Mr. That Brooks, this, it states that you have interrupted me matter. repeatedly. You are on the verge of being removed to that courtroom. I don't want to do that. What, I want you to stay here. But you law, keep Honor. interrupting me and bringing up irrelevant matters. I told you yesterday, as a courtesy that was provided to you, so that you would, frankly, not complain that you didn't get it as quickly as possible. Okay, I am not the custodian of the records. If you have an issue with what was provided to you, how it was provided to you, then take it up with the clerk of she court. But from me. now on, I am not going to be the messenger and give you documents that you request to the custodian of the records or from the custodian of the records. They will simply have to be delivered to you at the jail. But that is in response to your discussion or whatever we want to call it this morning. I'm not taking it up. All right, it is irrelevant. It, it needed to be noted for the record. It doesn't need it to was, be noted, sir. All right, the jury's me, coming back out, and I'm going court. to warn you if you bring this up again, I will pause 
and I will remove you to the next courtroom for being disrespectful, for being interruptive, for being disruptive, and for bringing up irrelevant matters in front of this jury. You will forfeit your right to be present for the direct examination of this witness. I object to did that, Did you Honor. hear what I said, no, sir? No, I did not. I, I object to that, Your Honor. Well, you can and object, and your please. objection is noted, but if you for interrupt record, when this jury comes the out, they will go. I will, rem I will have them taken out again, and you will be removed to the next courtroom. The, you can't, what is the legal basis for that ruling, Your Honor? Illinois versus Allen, sir, and all of the and, other cases that I've cited previously. Anything, I'll make the appropriate record. Stop interrupting me. The jury's coming out. We're continuing with this trial despite your repeated efforts to disrupt. That's Yesterday, sit down. Record. Yesterday alone, sir, 17 interruptions, not including the opportunity that I gave you where you spent 50 minutes, okay, discussing what were primarily either irrelevant or baseless accusations and requests not based in law or fact. I was abundantly patient with you yesterday. And you still have to and, verify by proof any of what and I said. None of that is required, sir. Because and it is. You can't verify. Your belief. Proof. That Where's that's the, the law the doesn't make it so, Mr. Brooks. Your belief that these are legitimate legal positions they doesn't are. change the law and doesn't make it so. It, it, it's so again, relevant because you didn't want. To I'm going it. to step off and give Mr. Brooks five minutes to cool off, and not, when that I, happens, I don't I'm to bringing cool off. the jury I'm not, I'm out, not angry at and all. then we will I just wanted continue. To, I don't. The state believes that all exhibits should go back. Uh, again, the. I know I understand the court has objection has concerns over the still image. Uh, I understand that might be in a little bit of a different category, but in terms of question number five, and I'll just while I have the floor, I'll just go through what they are. The the FBI aerial with all person of interest marked, that would appear to be the defense exhibit that they neglected to mark, and has now been accepted. The state also has one, which is Exhibit 25, which has uh, Mr. Rittenhouse and Mr. Rosenbaum marked, but not the uh, Zeminskis. So I assume they mean the defense exhibit, but we could send both back or have them come down and view it, however we do that. The drone video is 73. That's the full unedited exhibit that's been in evidence now for over a week. Uh, the zoomed in still image, we all have talked about that and beating that horse to death, so I'm going to skip that for now. Then the full event video in regular and slow motion. That seems to be the drone video, as that is the only video of Incident 1 that was played in slow motion, just as the only video of Incident 2 in slow motion was Dr. Black's. Uh, so their expert video was submitted. Our expert video is, uh, I believe this is actually six videos that they're asking for, which is the drone video um, it's it's uh, it's spliced out, so it shows the first third of the incident, the second third, and then up until the the end of the shooting, and it's in regular and slow motion, and that's exhibits 581, 582, 583. I'm sorry, S81, S82, S83, S84, S85, and S86. And I we believe that. The jury should have full access to them. They should have full access in this room. And that's our position. I do not believe a technical reality, shall we say, or a technical, an unknown technical incident should result in a mistrial. <coughs> How would we object? Pardon me? How would we object to something we didn't know existed yeah, I, I until it was over. I didn't find that point that particularly persuasive. But anyway, um, it's, impo all right, so uh, it's impossible for us to do that. And if you're, I've been a, pro everybody in this room that's a lawyer has been a prosecutor. Your job is fairness and being a truth seeker. It's not debatable that it's not fair what happened? We can sit here all day and say it's been played. We didn't know. That. How is that reasonable? Well, I persistently warned the state that, you know, there's a day uh, of reckoning 
with respect to these things. I, my, my feeling is I had my qualms and I uh, decided, well, I'll let the jury hear it. I, um, I, uh, I, I, as I, I think I made the comparison the other day of the breathalyzer where the officer doesn't have to be familiar with how the operation, how the breathalyzer does the analysis. But, um, but that's a device that has been sanctioned by the courts, and I just don't think we're at that place with this, and particularly if they've got evidence. I didn't see that in your motion about the manual. We've learned it since I filed the motion. Well, if they've got the manual, I don't know. It may be. Uh, I, I, I forewarned you. I forewarned you. You know, you've pressed with this, and that's fine. I've let it in. And I, my view on it now is where where we are. We're we might as well follow through with it. And uh, if they if they've got everything correct and it's reliable, then they won't have a problem. If it isn't, it's going to be ugly. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is one of our breaks. I'm going to need to probably put ask you to retire to your headquarters, your deliberation room, and we'll call you back in just a minute. Okay, and when we finish up our business, all right. Remember the court's admonitions, ladies and gentlemen. Please be seated. Our jury has left us. All right, Mr. Steele, what's your what's your motion, sir? Good morning again, Your Honor. Your Honor, last week, two weeks, three weeks ago, you ordered the parties to share all of their displays an opening statement to the others so we don't have to have these interruptions. I did that. The state shared with me four attachments. That's all they had. That's what I got. What you just saw on your screen, if you don't remember, I'll ask the state to put it up and I asked for it to be marked as exhibit, is what you already excluded. It states that Mr. Ryan was convicted of murder and I represent the co-defendant who's not on trial on the appeal. How did that not get sent to me so I could bring it to the Sambo Court's attention, one? And two, how do we just violate court orders? So yes, I have a serious motion for a mistrial because it's intentional misconduct. That's my motion. All right. And I'd like the screenshot to be um, captured for Ms. Weaver to put in the record. I'll admit it is, de is uh, next court exhibit in order of the state's presentation anyway, so. All right, so that'll be, that'll be court one for purposes of the trial. So, Miss um, Love, um, what's your what's your response to Mr. Steele's assertion about the Mr. Ryan? As it relates to Mr. Ryan and the exhibits that the state intended to play and to um, display for the jury, I sent to Mr. Steele and everyone else the pictures and the photographs that I expected to use. Um, as it relates to um, the slide to which Mr. Steele is now referring regarding his representation on appeal, I'm not certain if the objection goes to the fact that there was the conviction because that's part of the indictment and that's part of the evidence that the state expects will show or if it's as to his objection about the fact that he represents Mr. Ryan or Mr. Blaylock on appeal. Don't represent Mr. Ryan. Mr. Blaylock, man. Excuse me. I never said this ever. That's it. So what's, your, what's your objection based upon, Mr. Steele? Uh, objection based upon, I argued this before the Sonoma Court. You argued the prosecution that before they ever mentioned my name, you granted this motion. 
that I did. Brought him up to this honorable court outside the presence of everybody. We're an opening statement. I am lied to. I am saying that. I am lied to. I don't know if anyone else got that exhibit. I did not get that exhibit. And I'm seeing everyone say shaky no. And now it goes against the court's order. We are bound, duty bound, to follow this honorable court's order. I join in the objection on behalf of Mr. Steele. Let me see the. Let me I can center. put it back up. Yes, Judge. ma'am. And Your Honor, while I am putting that back up, I will state in my place that initially, when there was the objection from Mr. Steele, I didn't have a clue what it was about because I didn't mention his name and didn't intend to mention his name. As I looked at the screen, I saw that part of his name was on the screen but for the I most part. That, but I mentioned that I, I ruled upon that last week. I did. I, yeah. that we were not, I would take it as it came in this case, and if, if the evidence got to that point, then I would deal with it accordingly. Yes, Your Honor. So, um... And Your Honor, as to Mr. Steele's motion as I'm pulling this up, the state would vehemently object to a mistrial and ask for a curative instruction um, and a reminder to the court, to the jury, that nothing that the lawyers say is evidence in this case. This is not at all the type of thing that um, rises to the level of mandating a mistrial. Certainly not. It just isn't. Um, I have the. All right. The slide. Well, uh, now, I have it now court, I'm about court, to court one for purposes of the motion for mistrial. Slide uh, 11 of 65, that I see where you have that um, at the bottom, represented by Brian Steele. So um, we can leave that for the time being. Leave it for the time being because it, it, it is what was it was it was up. I'm gonna just I'm gonna I'm going to uh, deny the motion for mistrial, Mr. Steele. But I will go ahead and give a curative instruction to our jurors at this point in time. So. Your Honor, I'm not supposed to ask for a re-occur to the court for my mistrial before the next process goes on. I'd like you to do me a courtesy, if you would, and allow me to do that now and preserve the motion for a mistrial. You, you, you made your motion for mistrial I, and the basis, and I have marked the, I marked the, I'm going to mark the whole state's presentation as is as, as court one for the purposes of your motion, and it will go in as, uh, as stated. And I have two other issues I'd like the court to just take up. One is just remember, I know you ruled on it, but the state said earlier today that Mr. Williams is contacting through parties that they don't know to pay for other people's lawyers. So I think that couples with that exhibit. And number two, I'd like the court to now order prosecution to give me and anyone else who wants to see it. I need to see respectfully what you ordered last week, all of the displays of the state of Georgia that they have not, have not given to us. So what do you mean by the, what displays are you talking about, Mr. Steele? I never saw that. I never saw the wolf. I never saw um, the, um, I mean, you ordered all the, I gave all my displays. I gave everything to the state. I got from the state. Are you talking about using for opening statements, sir? Of course. Okay. Should have been done. All right. All right, Ms. Love. Yeah. But, Thank you, Your Honor. Um, two matters, Your Honor. Um, one, the 
first thing that Mr. Steele has requested of the court regarding the representation that the state made about other YSL members contacting Jeffrey Williams for representation is absolutely and has always been a part of what the state expects will show it. Trial. I'm going to deny that portion, but to Mr. Steele's point, uh, we I'd already made that issue in terms of his particular involvement and anything you need to let me know prior to that, and you need I need to rule upon it, and also subject to foundation, yeah. just like this. So yeah. I assume that what you told our jurors is what you expect the evidence to show. Yes. Yes. All definitely. Right, so I'm going to I'm going to overrule that part of his objection. What about the last thing you mentioned? And your honor, as to um, the court's directive that we turn over anything or any exhibits or photographs. That was my understanding of the court's directive that we expect to show an opening statement. Um, as a matter of course, I can again reiterate the fact that it was an inadvertent um, omission to leave Mr. Steele at least part of his name on I got here. that, but he's, he's talking about, is there, is there anything else you're going to use in open you haven't shown to the defense counsel. He's telling us. Sharing. He's well. I said that. I told you to do that a week ago. Your Honor, because I, I, here's what here's what I told you was going to happen. I've got a jury that's out right now that's being interrupted, and Miss Dean Williams, you should have made your motion or should have told me about that an hour ago or when you found out about it. Not hijack me at the bench about that. You did what you had to do, but I'm not happy about that. I'm not happy about any of this. Because this is stuff we could take care of before our jury comes in. And that makes you all, you know, lessen your ability as advocates and lessen our ability for this, for this jury to go ahead and get this case seamlessly. This is what I told you all was going to happen. So have you given them everything you're going to show them during opening statement? Your Honor, I haven't given them all of the word slides. I did give to them what Mr. Williams objected to. I had given that to them previously. I will give them or share with them the things that have been added as of this evening. And Can you do that over the next five minutes? I sure can. Deputy Ingram, can, or Sergeant Ingram, can you find out if our jurors are ready? Are they, with are they ready? Are they still using the restroom? They... I'll send that to them right now as we're waiting. Your Honor, can we have, can we have a few? Your Honor, Jay Apt, on behalf of Mr. Kendrick, can we have five or ten minutes to review whatever Ms. Love is going to send us? You can take a comfort break, and I'll come back at 10 of, uh, 10 of, of um, 12. And um, like I said, whatever we don't finish before 12, 15, we'll, we'll pick up after lunch, okay? Thank you, Your Honor. Who's, 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 who's talking? Sharp. Yes, Mr. Sharp. On behalf of Mr. Stillwell. Um, we've been operating pre-trial with the Harvey rule. I want to make sure that it, the record is clear that we join Mr. Steele in his motion for mistrial. And if Your Honor... I'll apply the Harvey rule unless you tell me otherwise. 